Hola muchachos, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes. Aquí tienen las instrucciones a tu tarea, Guided Workbook Pages 109 through 112. Now, as, how, as we had mentioned today in class, I had told you that two of these pages would refer to, forgive me, let me go ahead and pull them up. Two of these pages uh, would refer to the verb ser, which we did together today in class. And then the first two pages would deal with a concept we did not go over together in class, but we went over much earlier on in the year when we were talking about making nouns plural. Um, so I wanted to make sure I covered this because in, in the video because we didn't go over it together, although it's very intuitive. Uh, and I think you guys will be able to complete it just fine. And of course, we can go over it together um, in tutorial. If you guys are not quite clear, we can spend time in tutorial tomorrow from 2 to 3, should you should you need. Um, but essentially, what this goes over, and it's on page 156 of your textbook as well, adjectives are just like nouns in that they must agree in both gender and number. Adjectives and nouns agree with one another in two ways. In gender, making sure that the ending is either masculine, ending in O usually, or feminine, ending in A. So nouns and adjectives agree in gender. Both of them ending in O for masculine or A in feminine. And they also agree in number. Whether the noun and adjective are singular or plural. Now the way that we make adjectives plural, simple. All we do is add an S after the vowel. Just like English, how we make nouns plural, we add an S. English doesn't have this dynamic, right, of adjectives and nouns needing to agree in gender and number. We don't have that in English. We have other types of agreement, like subject-verb agreement, but we don't have adjective-noun agreement. This is unique to Romance languages that I'm familiar with. I don't believe uh, other languages have this. Only Romance languages do. So pretty intuitive if you go to Part A, for example. You can see here that most adjectives that are masculine and an O, and most adjectives that are feminine and an A. And remember what we talked about at the beginning of the year, how to identify nouns as masculine or feminine? Well, you can do so by the ending, right? O or A, or you can also do so by identifying uh, using the definite article, L, is a definite article used with masculine singular nouns. Just like la is used with feminine singular nouns. Los is for masculine plural nouns. And las is used for feminine plural nouns. Definite article in English just translates to the. Like the bread, el pan. Or la sopa, the soup. Los jamones, the hams. I've actually never seen ham, jamón, plural before. And las galletas would be the cookies. You can see how the adjective agrees too. Singular, singular. Masculine, masculine. And for plural, ending in S but also making sure to end in O if it's masculine or A if it's feminine. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of part A and go through these. Basically all you're doing for part A is identifying each noun as either masculine or feminine. Take a look at the ending. If the ending, and I do believe that they uh, address it here, or they don't address it here, Usually, uh, nouns that end in a consonant are masculine. 
Nouns that end in a consonant, not a vowel, are masculine. Unless you see an A right before, and we know that A is an indicator for feminine nouns, right? So number one, el pan, which actually, pan actually breaks that rule, I guess. A with an S, put it that way. A with an S would be feminine. But A in a consonant that's not S, that means it's masculine. Numero uno would be M, right? El pan. M for number one. Sopas. You can see here from the notes, that is a feminine noun. So as for number one, we wrote M. For number two, we're going to write F. One and three are very similar. They end in a consonant that is not S. Those are always masculine nouns. So numero tres is going to be L, masculine. Four and five, both ending in A, are going to be feminine. Okay, so go through the rest of those, marking masculine or feminine. For part C, you're indicating if the adjective should be singular or plural. Or masculine plural or feminine plural, depending upon the noun that it modifies. Remember, nouns and adjectives in Spanish agree in two ways, in gender and in number. So the ending, O or A, needs to match, and the presence of S, or not having an S, also needs to match between adjectives and nouns. So pan is singular, sabroso is singular, sopas is feminine plural, sabrosas is feminine plural, that's a match. Yogur is masculine singular, sabroso is masculine singular, salchichas is feminine plural, sabrosas is feminine plural. So pick the adjective that matches according to gender and according to number. For this chart, you are using the information up above here to fill in the missing pieces. The plural form of divertido, again, all we need to do is what? Add an S, right? It says it over here, I guess. To make adjectives plural, all we need to do is add an S. To make simpatico plural, add an S. To make these adjectives singular, remove an S. Very intuitive and straightforward. You're going to do the same here for part E and F. F, you're picking the adjective that best describes the person according to their, their actions, their behavior, right? You can always use Spanish Dictionary if need be to look up the adjectives. But hopefully a lot of these being cognates, like artistico, seria means serious, um, should be able to pinpoint as to which one to use there for part F. Okay, so those are the first two pages, and again, use page 156 to guide you. The rest goes over the verb ser, which is what we went over together today. And very, very straightforward. Here you have the conjugations of ser. And for the, for the workbook, we, we did a lot of these together. You're going to pick the form that matches the conjugation. You're going to use the information up above here to do that. So, el, es, ustedes, son. Cierto, pick the form that best fits. All right. Tu eres, yo, 
excuse me, AIS, using the information up above here, and then do the same. Jot down the conjugation that best matches the form for parts B and C, filling in the blank for part C with the conjugation that best fits each form. For the last part, part D and E, fill in the conjugation according to the subject. Now, these are all in the form of a question, so the subjects are going to come at the very end. Conjugate set according to the subject that comes at the very end. And then part E is combining both concepts, right? Where you're going to not only choose the correct form of ser, but the ending that goes along with it. So, for example, el es artístico. O ending, because we're talking about he. Um, two could kind of go either way, because it's according, I guess, to me. So, I guess that would be masculine. Tu eres perezoso. But you can see that this is feminine, this is feminine, and then yo is going to be according to your gender, the gender that you identify with. So that is your homework exercises, uh, guided workbook exercises 109, 10, 11, and 12.